next uh, presentation is on the UEFI uh, SCT and firmware test suite. Um, the presenters are uh, Saprith Venkatesh from ARM, Alex Hung from Conical Group, and Harry Xiong from Intel. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about Saprith. He's a software engineer and lead tech at ARM. He's an active member in the UEFI test working group and acts as a, the liaison uh, for ARM. Um, do we have the right one up here? Um, Alex, he's the lead kernel engineer at Conical Group and maintainer of the firmware test suite. Um, and last but not least, uh, Harry, uh, who is a technical marketing engineer for UEFI slash Tiano and from Intel. Um, he spent the last 12 years working on UEFI and has spent his time as a firmware engineer at Intel for 24 years. With that, I'll turn it over to you guys. Uh, hi, we're still bringing up the presentation here. So uh, just a couple of logistical items. So uh, um, uh, out front, you'll see um, when we talk about the SCTs and some of these uh, test suites, um, we have copies of the um, uh, FW, or excuse me, of the SCTs uh, up online uh, at the um, uh, test tools. Uh, subdirectory, so you can now download the binaries under the documents. You have to log in as a member, then you can get access to it. Uh, there's some Q codes up front on the screen if you want to pull it down that way, or just go to the UFI site and the test tool site and download it. Um, we also have um, Megan Day and Eric uh, Jin could not be here um, uh, due to travel restrictions or whatever, so um, they asked me to uh, put the, the law of the Linux UFI validation test suite uh, sticks at the front desk. You can go pick it up there or download it from the the zero1.org site, uh, and then the um, SCTs, if you produce any uh, problems that you find in either the SCT test suite or the Love uh, Linux UFI validation test suite, you can return the uh, USB sticks with uh, the logs and readmes to the front desk. We'll make sure that uh, Megan Day uh, receives the um, Love, you know, any problems, she'll, she'll receive the, the test logs, and same thing for the um, uh, UFI SCT uh, test logs. If there's some problems you see with the, the beta 2.7a test, please uh, bring it up to our uh, front table for the log files. And you can also submit a bugzilla since uh, we've opened that up now. So you should be able to file bugzillas against the uh, SCTs as well. Uh, and then Alex is here. You can directly hand him any issues you, f you find in FWTS. So. Um, so I'd first like to introduce, um, you know, there's uh, three companies here. There's um, Supreth from ARM, um, you know, me from Intel, and I'm, I'm just standing in for Eric because Eric couldn't travel here. And then, of course, there's Alex Hung from uh, Canonical. Uh, so both, um, uh, you know, Eric and uh, Eric Jin and Supreth have been working on the SCTs now for quite a while, right? So uh, they've been doing the, the thankless job of actually writing the SCTs every time we update the specs. And uh, Alex and the Canonical team has done a very good job of updating both the ACPI tests and the UFI tests. So they definitely deserve some credit for all the, the work they've been doing, for all the, the tests they've been writing and not getting any credit for it or any, any uh, financial uh, benefits from it, other than just uh, the, the better quality code in the ecosystem. Uh, so I'll talk, I'll just give a quick intro and then hand it off to Saprith. Uh, so just a little bit about the, um, the history of the SCTs here. Uh, so the um, SCTs have been around for a while. I think back in the early Intel days, uh, there was a team uh, that put together the SCTs. It was under uh, a private repository, and so we would just look at the next version of the spec and then um, you know, put those tests uh, out as binaries only uh, up on the UFI.org site. Uh, so in the past, the SCTs have only been uh, there to uh, take as a binary and then whatever the latest stable uh, version of the SCTs are, you'd be able to go out and test them. So um, we follow the model of the kind of like USB where you self-certify. Um, you know, the SCTs were written in a way so that uh, it's more for uh, tests for existence um, in your particular implementation of UFI. So we're just going out there to make sure that your uh, particular implementation of UFI is compliant with UFI spec. Uh, so you're, it goes out and looks at the spec and tests to see if your UFI system table and your protocols uh, comply with the specification. 
so the, the early test harness was um, you know, set up in two different modes. There was a native and passive mode so that you could uh, test the SETs. And if you were an IHV, they were also written in a way so that you could test your UFI driver with the driver model and, and make sure that you've implemented the um, UFI drivers correctly. Uh, so there's a, for the network stack, there's, some, uh, there's a passive mode they set up, and that's the, to uh, help test uh, some of the other uh, drivers in passive mode, basically. Uh, so these were sort of like the guidelines that we were using to uh, try and test uh, the UFI implementations out there so that you have some sort of uh, compliance testing to do on your own. Uh, Uh, oops, skipped ahead here. Uh, so there's a repository right now for um, the, uh, this is the old repository uh, where you can go grab the source for the SCTs. Um, uh, Sabrita will talk about the, uh, the next round of SCTs, the, the beta that uh, Don was referring to. Uh, and last year, I think we, we open sourced uh, the uh, uh, source code. So in addition to the binaries being up on the um, test tools uh, directory under UFI.org, we have the um, uh, source code that's also up on uh, GitHub, so you can now participate. Um, you know, hat in hand, we're looking for more participation uh, in this open source model. Um, and then uh, Saprith will go over uh, some more of the details uh, so that we have both source and binaries for both um, IA and uh, ARC64 uh, images. So here's Saprith from ARM. So uh, last year, um, we decided to open source uh, UFI SCT source. And a uh, lot of behind the scenes initiative took place uh, to make UFI SCT open source. Uh, you might ask what behind the initiatives, behind the scenes initiatives. So this involved uh, communicating or taking opinion of 13 different legal entities and then uh, creating a UFI SCT uh, transfer term document, which uh, the original six uh, contributing companies had to sign, and then it had to be put on oath, and then finally uh, the source code was donated to the UFI form, forum in the last year. Uh, so this process actually took about a year, uh, during which uh, there was no uh, development as such, so uh, with the with UFI SCT now being open source, uh, we have kind of have to catch up uh, with the UFI specification. So the latest UFI SCT 2.7 beta uh, has been released, even though the slide says coming soon. Uh, it has been kind of uh, uh, the ta it has been tagged, and uh, the decision has to be taken by UTWG. Uh, once it's been tested to kind of uh, release it. Uh, so the EDK2 test tag is based on EDK2 test tag, uh, EDK2 TANA core test tag, uh, which is kind of uh, EDK2 test tag uh, will be one month after the EDK uh, test tag, uh, EDK TANA core source uh, tag. So the open source GitHub repo uh, is also under TANA core. Uh, under EDK2 test. Uh, there will be a, a stable tag uh, every quarter, uh, similar to uh, the EDK2 source code. And the recommendation for designating the release stable will be based on UTWG's decision. OK, uh, so building UFI SCT, uh, the instructions are present. Uh, in the GitHub, uh, it basically involves uh, uh, getting the EDK2 source code, a uh, stable tag, and then uh, creating a symbolic link to a city package, and uh, uh, running the build scripts uh, against a particular architecture and a particular compiler. So builds are currently available for uh, x64, IA32-based uh, platforms as well as uh, ARC64 based platforms. Uh, the instructions are uh, for both Windows as well as uh, Linux environment. 
reporting issues, so it follows the same process as EDK2. Uh, we have a uh, EDK2 test product and a UFI SED component in Bugzilla. Uh, so if you want to request new features or uh, log a bug, uh, please uh, uh, open an issue in bugzilla.tianacore.org. Uh, Earlier, when it existed as a private GitHub, uh, we were tracking the issues on UTWG Mantis. And uh, we are tracking it. Uh, uh, we have migrated those issues over to Bugzilla. And we are no longer tracking it in mantis.ufi.org. All right. Uh, so. Now that uh, the UFI SED is open source, uh, the contribution guidelines to contributing to UFI SED uh, are similar to the EDK2 Tiana Core project. And it is under BSD license. Uh, general questions on UFI SED uh, can, with the subject line EDK2 test, can be sent to EDK2 uh, devil lists. We have a kind of, uh, since EDK2 migrated over to groups.io, we are planning to migrate it over uh, to groups.io as well. So since uh, the contribution guidelines are similar to uh, EDK2, uh, please get involved with UFI SCT. And then uh, when you write a driver or a protocol uh, against uh, latest UFI spec, Please keep test case in your mind, and please contribute to uh, UEFI SET uh, open source project. We appreciate all your contributions. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll give the floor to Alex, who will talk about the firmware test suite. Hello, uh, thanks, Pri, and uh, I'm Alex Hong, Alex Hong from Canadigo. And in the second half of the presentation, I'm going to share the news and the updates for the firmware test suite. Okay. Okay, so the agenda includes a brief introduction of the firmware test suite and its update, followed by the new, we have, a, we have built a new firmware FWTS Live. And the, also on, on how we build it and how you can build it. And last but not least, how to contribute to the FWTS and the maybe IFWTS life. So what is firmware test suite? Uh, FWTS is a test suite that runs on Linux. And it's also the recommended HCPI, HCPI SCT. FWTS includes a variety of tests, such as the HCPI UEFI and the many other more. And each test may include subtests. For example, the ACPI test includes a, te a, a test for table checksum and the individual test for each ACPI tables. <laughs> Similarly, there are also tests for each UEFI runtime services. Okay, uh, ACPI spec was updated in January, and uh, we have implemented the updates for ACPI 6.3 since the version 1902. And the latest version is 1903, and the level will be the one will be running in this plug fest. So if you are implementing any of the new features, please run the 1903. And for the obvious reason, we don't have many reference systems that we can run our test against too. So if you can fire, if you find any bug, please file it to our mailing list at the firmware uh, FWTS dash develop. Or you can also file a bug on our bug system under this as a list on these slides. And the, the this is a screenshot for the FWTS live. It is a bootable USB image. You can just download to a USB disk without installing any Linux or FWTS on your target system. And in the FWTS, in fact, is 
run on top of the Ubuntu Live. And the original FWTS Live was based on Ubuntu 14.04, which is now end of life. So now we have replaced the base system to Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. And this version of the LTS will be supported for 10 years. And of course, we are not targeting to, run the, uh, to build FWTS Live for on 18.04 for 10 years, but we'll see how it goes. So since we have replaced the uh, Ubuntu to 18.04, that means we'll have, a, we'll have a new kernel that will support more hardware. In addition to the changes to the Ubuntu life, there are some other changes as well. For example, because we moved to the new system, the image size is, is larger, it's much larger in fact. But now, so that's why, uh, let's, that's why we now upload the compressed image with the XC file extension. And that's, that will be like a, so now the compressed image is much, much smaller than the original one. So it's like 100 something megabytes. So once you download the image, you can just use the on XC command on Linux. Or on Windows, you can use the WinZip or 7-Zip. That's in theory, because I never tried it before. <laughs> So now we also have working, two major working items. Like the first one is try to reduce the image size. Even, even though we think the image size it should not be a problem for people because in the USB disk, I, I, it's difficult to find a USB disk smaller than one gigabyte anyways, but we are, we are still trying to reduce the size. And the second item is, like, is that we are also trying to build a FWTS Live for ARM. That's the one thing we are working hard right now. But we are still curious, how many of you might be interested to see uh, FWTS Live for ARM architecture? Can you just like, raise your hand so we, can, we know how we spend the time to work on? Good. <laughs> thank you. We see, uh, yeah, we see people. All. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I think we, we try to build a system. We actually build a system, but you wouldn't. I don't think it boots, but uh, we are still working on it. And I gave a presentation on how to build FWTS Live like uh, in tw last year. But now the, uh, the, the old approach is no longer used. So the new approach is kind of, it's very simple. It's like uh, on Ubuntu, if you, uh, if you try to build the F new FWTS Live on Ubuntu, it's, it's, just, it's just like a download, it's just like a git clone from my GitHub and run the script. This like a build new from a task. FWTS Live dot sh plus the version number here. But other than the, but, but if you look, look at the script, it's other than setting the environment, it's just one, like two, three commands. It's like a clone from another Git repo and the, run the make command. And it is in theory possible to build on other OS such as Mac or even Windows, in theory. Because the new approach uses the Docker, Docker containers. So if you look into the Mac file, you'll see it just, basically it just run Docker build and the Docker run. So, um, contribution to the, oh, FWTS is open source itself and it uses GPL or V2 license which allow anyone to use, share, and modify the source code. And some, many, of, many people are not clear about the open source license, but in, uh, in summary, the GPL v2 license allow you to just say use and share. And if you, you are using the source code internally, you don't have to release your modification, but if you want to take FWTS and build another, system, uh, build another product and sell it, then you will have to open source the differences. We are also receiving some uh, question about like, should I update my changes? Should I upstream my source code? I think the answer will be depends. Like I said, you don't have to if you are just using the FWTS internally. But we highly recommend it because the, it will be getting more and more difficult to merge your to merge the upstream code with your difference 
as the FWTS grows over time. And sending patches to us uh, require a bit just than sending your source code. Because we require have we have some rules of the for the code style. Mostly we follow the Linux kernel source code style, but not as not as restrict. We are particularly in look into the function bracelet and also how you use the space and the tabs. If you are interested, you can check how how the Linux source code code style is. And uh, we, we also have a test for the test, for the firmware test suite. It's a, it's a built-in test that like check whether you break any features, existing features when you write your new test. But it's optional. We usually just, we'll just make one for you if you don't have one. And uh, we, to submit your patches, we require to use the Git patch. And uh, please do have uh, informative headers and the description because they help us to uh, review the changes. Also, we need to have a sign off by field, by the author as well. And finally, uh, you please use git, git send command to send the source code to our mailing list, uh, not as a touch, attachment, because we'll have to resend it. Okay. Okay, that's the end of the presentation. Thank you all. And uh, if you have any question for the UEFI SCT or firmware test suite, it's not time. Okay, I guess. Thank you.